If you were to click out of this video right now and go instead to literally any self-improvement website on the entire internet, I guarantee you they would talk all about embracing the new you. New career, new friends, new hair color, new apartment, new sleeping patterns, new exercise routine, new eating habits, everything new. Well, I'm here to tell you that sometimes when we're in need of self-improvement, there's absolutely nothing wrong in embracing instead the old you, the person you were before you had all these conflicts. <laughs> I'm Linda. This is Linda's World. This is Self-Care Sundays. And tonight, we're talking about hitting the reset button on our lives. Remember years ago when you had the personal computer at home and something was glitching like a virus or something and you went into history and restored the computer to a time when it was working correctly? Well, if we could do that to our technology, why can't we do that with our lives? I think we can. I've been doing a bit of that recently myself and I'm here to tell you all about it because this episode of Linda's World starts right now. Tonight's Self-Care Sundays comes with a bit of a story time attached, but before we get into it, I'd like to say a few words if I may. Number one, I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV, as the saying goes. I'm not a licensed psychologist. All I am is a 43-year-old woman who's had a wide array of negative experiences, and I've come out the other side. And because I have, I feel it is my duty as a member of the human race to clue you guys in, to spread the word, to share my story, so that if you're experiencing something similar, you too can come out the other side. Thing number two, I am a person who suffers from four diagnosed mental illnesses for which I take daily medication. And because that's true, I've spent the better part of about two decades now, actually almost three, studying psychology. It began as an interest in the subject matter as a college course, and it quickly branched out into educating myself about my disorders so that I could tell people in my life how to deal with someone like me. And in later years, it became more of an advocacy thing. I want to spread the word as much as I can that mental health is every bit as important as physical health and should be treated as such and that the stigma must end in our society. That's why I'm here. That's why I have a YouTube channel. Which brings me to thing number three. And finally, if you're just finding this video by happenstance and you're not yet a member of Linda's World, well, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell while you're there so you can tell when new videos drop to this channel. Linda's World is an inspirational channel, a place where you can come to get the tools you need to live your best life, even when you're not exactly living your best life. I've been doing that for 43 years, and so that's why tonight I bring to you Self-Care Sundays, hitting the reset button on your life. Now, I said in the introduction that if you go to a website or if you read a magazine article or a book, do people still read books? You will find <clears throat> that self-improvement usually comes in the form of change and that only you can change your life. And so they'll tell you to change things and they will tell you to do new stuff. So they'll tell you to like put together like a new exercise plan or get a new career trajectory or choose a new major or move to a new city. New, 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 right? And so this is how we march forth and we do this. And I'm not saying there's no merit in that. I've changed myself for the better before. I've done new stuff. It's perfectly cool. Listen, seven years ago, I did something new called Zumba and changed my whole life, changed my whole body frame. I lost 50 pounds. But <clears throat> even though there's some merit in changing yourself for the better and doing new stuff, sometimes self-improvement comes more in the form of dialing it back, going back, hitting the hitting the history button on your computer, you know, except in your life, and figuring out who you used to be. Now, my mother and I have this inside, I don't want to call it an inside joke because it's not a joke. It's, uh, it's nothing funny about it. It's something I said that my mother took really seriously about a year ago on the phone, and we use it as sort of inside lingo, okay? And the word is reclaim. Now, I was talking about something that was only moderately serious. It was something about, like, television or the beach or something like that, you know, stuff that I enjoy. And I told her that I was trying to reclaim the person I used to be doing X, Y, and Z to have fun, right? And so sometime later, we were on the phone again, and my mother and I speak uh, on the phone about everything as trivial as paper towels to everything as deep as grief and the meaning of life, you know? And so we're sitting there talking on the phone, and this is not the story time, this is digression. And, um, and we were talking about this reclaiming thing. And she said that she really appreciated how I put that. And so she said, I'm going to use that word. That's like our mantra, reclaim, right? And so we talk about it all the time. And so we go back and forth on this and 
reclaim is like the word of the day with us, right? And so when I was putting together Self Care Sundays and I was trying to figure out what to say to you guys and like how to approach, how to, how to meld together the story time I'm about to tell you with this thing about hitting the reset button on your life and reclaiming, I kept coming back to that conversation with my mother. Reclaim who you used to be. It's pretty much all I've been thinking about all week, actually. So I'd like to share this story with you. First, a sip of water. It's usually Pepsi. Who am I? <laughs> well, okay, so I'm gonna make this story as short and sweet as I possibly can, because I wanna get to the point about reclaiming. All right, so once upon a time in 1993, we got cable. I'm so old that I'm from the times when all blocks on your street, like all streets in your neighborhood weren't cable ready, you know? And so what happened was the Twin Towers were attacked in 1993. And the TV stations, all except for CBS, Channel 2, were knocked out. And The Wizard of Oz was on. And my whole family, including myself, hates The Wizard of Oz. And it was the only thing that was on. And I kept needling my parents. I was like, you know, if we had cable, we would get, you know? And, and so a month later, on my dad's birthday, we got cable. So cable had Nick at Night, and Nick at Night had the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Now, in my most recent video, my Top 10 Tuesdays, I spoke about how I've been watching it often in quarantine. So I watched the Mary Tyler Moore Show, it was on at 10 and 10.30, and little 16-year-old Linda became obsessed. I loved the concept of this woman who was from Roseburg, Minnesota, small town, right? And she was 30, and instead of marrying a man she didn't love, she elected to leave her town leave her job, leave her friends, leave her mom and dad and everything. And at the age of 30, which in 1970 when the show came on was like 40 today, right? And, um, and embarked on a completely new life. And the song was like, you know, you're gonna make it after all. Did. And she moved to Minneapolis and she got a job at WJM, a local news station, where she was an associate producer and later a producer. And the show kind of sucked and the newscaster was bad and that's like a running joke of the sitcom and all. But the thing is that the Mary Taylor Moore show was basically this premise of like what was happening in the 70s, which was a whole bunch of young women deciding instead of doing the traditional route of like marriage and children and an apron and a dishwasher and whatever, to go out and have actual careers beyond secretary, beyond school nurse, you know, be like just be like executives or whatever, and go out and embark on a new life. And Mary Richards, the character played by Mary Tyler Moore, was this, you know, she was 30 when the show started, she was 37 when the show ended, and she lived her whole 30s doing this unorthodox life. She was living the life of a single girl and she had friends and she had neighbors and she was friends with her boss and she was friends with the guy sitting next to her. And she had parties that were like notoriously bad. It was like a running gag of the show. And she had like, you know, a career and her own money and she saw men and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And she, they never said whether or not she, they, it was the seventies so they couldn't be explicit, but it was, we were clued into the fact that she was sexually active without benefit of marriage, which 45 years ago was like, <gasps> Right? So in any case, I watched this show <clears throat> and I was 16 and I was also the editor of my school newspaper at the time. And I was like, I need, like I need to do what Mary Richards is doing. Like that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'd moved to Minneapolis, but it's colder than New York, so I'm not going there. I'll just pick my city. I'm gonna go to California, you know? And I will do that. I will be a TV news producer. I don't wanna be on camera, but I wanna be a news producer and I want to tell stories that are important for society. I want to clue society in about like what's important and produce like documentaries or like, you know, like have, I don't know, like feature segments about like things that matter, like sexism and racism and ageism and, and you know, the importance of like gay rights and minorities and you know, whatever, like, you know, just be like as, I guess as liberal as I possibly could. Um, and like in the TV news and just, make my make my life that way like Mary Richards have like no husbands but be fine with it and have a wide array of people around me who were my friends or my co-workers who I could just enjoy the company of when I wanted to or enjoy the solitude when I wanted to too and live alone in my house Mary didn't have a dog but I wanted a dog I did that right and just be like Mary right and so I did everything I possibly could at my little 16 year old self to do this, okay? Trust me, the story time's going somewhere. Okay, so now in December of that year, um, Ms. Margulies, my um, English teacher who was also the faculty advisor of the newspaper, rounded up four of us girls on the paper, myself included, at 7.30 in the morning and put us all in her car, 
Those were the days when you didn't even need permission slips for a school trip. And we all drove into the city and we went to NYU. And we sat in on a couple of TV news production and journalism classes. And I, I remember sitting in the back of a college classroom and drinking a Pepsi, of course. And I was bowled over the colleges had vending machines. My high school was ghetto as hell. It still is. I worked there. And so we, I, I sat there like just sipping on my Pepsi, taking notes in this class like I was like in it, you know. And just, I was bowled over with all the cool stuff that this man had to say. And, you know, I sat in a couple of other things, but this one in particular was really cool. And like people gave a presentation or whatever, and it was just awesome. And then we went to a diner to eat and then we piled into the car. That's actually the worst I've had to pee in my life, actually. And I went home. And I remember after I peed, I'm um, going home and telling my mother that I was so impressed with NYU and I was so impressed with TV journalism and that it was just like the Mary Tyler Moore show except real. And I just really, really, like I'd found my career path and I really wanted to do this, you know? And I was just bowled over and I, I was like, thank God, finally my talent for writing, my ability to communicate, my need to get my message across, um, my like slightly unorthodox thinking and my um, desire to reach people. Like it had a name, it had a place, it had something I could do, you know? And I know that Mary was fiction, but like, I'm not Mary, I'm Linda and I could do it in the modern day and it was gonna be awesome and kick ass and I was gonna do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I sit here before you, not a TV news producer, not living in Minneapolis, and not being anything like Mary Richards. I am sitting here before you, a 20 year veteran, New York City public school teacher and kind of broken. And so when I, it was at my, my lowest point um, this past two weeks, um, I made a video um, not too long ago. It was um, in lieu of top 10 Tuesdays. I told you guys I just wasn't feeling it. I couldn't make up a list because I was in quarantine depression and I, it, the title was I'm going through it. And so it was somewhere around that time that I discovered Hulu and so that's why Top 10 Tuesdays was all about TV last week. And I discovered that it had Mary Tyler Moore, you know, so I said, oh, well, son of a bitch, I gotta watch this, you know. And so I'm watching the show, you know, now we're in present day, now we're in this, like, this last week. I watched this show and I was like, oh my God, this is who you used to be. You used to get excited about like living a cool single girl's life and going from girl to woman in an awesome career in a city that you like enjoyed with people around you that you enjoyed who were cool characters. And like you used to think about how you would be that person. You would be your version of Mary Richards when you were an adult, you know? And I am trying very hard by the way, not to get emotional talking about it because it was like a thing, like I, it was like, bowled me over this week, right? And I'll try not to have cry face in front of you. You know, it's not cool when an old lady cries. So I, I was like, I was like, son of a bitch, like this is who I used to be. And so I was thinking about um, how to impart this to you and what to say for, for uh, self-care Sundays, you know? And that's why I'm getting to my message 12 and a half minutes into this video. <laughs> Which is <clears throat> sometimes you need to be reminded of who you were. Sometimes you need to be reminded of dreams that you used to have. Sometimes you need to restore yourself, if you will, pretend you're an iPhone and restore yourself to factory settings and go back to the things you used to think, the way, the, the, the passion you used to feel for something, anything, being a doctor, playing guitar, whatever. Okay, um, and you need to remember, like you ever see those memes, like take a deep breath and remember who the fuck you are? Like sometimes you do, and you have to remember who the fuck you are, and even more importantly, you have to remember who the fuck you used to be, who you wanted to be, and how you handled it, and what you did back in the day, what little brain tricks you did, what song did you listen to, what clothing did you put on, what people did you talk to, whatever it was that in your past made you who you are, at a time when who you are didn't suck, when you were comfortable with the person that you were. And, you know, being comfortable in myself is not something that really happens. You know, I mean, it's not easy as a person with mental illnesses to be comfortable in here often, you know? Um, 
I've been on earth 43 years and I don't think that my days of being comfortable with who I am even stretch into a month, you know? Um, but the thing is, I remember being comfortable then and I remember having dreams and I remember having goals and I remember having hope and I remember having like excitement when I talked about shit and I remember like being like, 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 having like a like a plan in place to be a well-rounded person and by that I don't just mean a rich person or a person with a cool career I mean a person who had all of the puzzle pieces in place and went to bed at night happy with the general way the day had gone you know like Mary Richards went to sleep at night generally happy with the way the day had gone there was even an episode where she wasn't happy and she got a new apartment you know so she always managed to figure it out and I know that you're going to tell me, but Linda, this is a TV sitcom. It's not real. And you're right. Okay. But the thing is, art imitates life and life imitates art, you know, and like, they don't write this shit in a vacuum. Like TV series are written just as novels are written, just as poems are written, just as plays are written about the human experience, you know, and I'm watching this person have a human experience over the course of seven seasons this week. And as I did back in 1993, when we got cable and I'm remembering lines and I'm laughing and I'm like, oh yeah, I used to like that one. And I'm enjoying the program, you know, but I'm also enjoying the shit out of remembering who I used to be. Now we come to the part of the video where I try to tell you what I'm going to do about it and what you should do about it when you find your Mary Tyler Moore show. <laughs> and honestly, I'm not entirely sure, but it is self care Sundays. And I think that one of the most important fundamental things a person can do in self-care is to try their damnedest to be comfortable. Like even if you're not happy per se, it begins with being comfortable. Comfortable in your own skin, comfortable in your home, comfortable in your relationships, comfortable when you get dressed in the morning, comfortable when you go to bed at night, comfortable when you're eating your dinner, you know, just comfortable. And I'm not. And I think that the best way to be comfortable is to remember 16 year old Linda <laughs> and watch the Mary Tyler Moore show and continue to study not how to improve myself like the like the websites say and, and make a new me right but how to continue to study how to embrace the old me you know the person with dreams the person who like I said got excited when she spoke of stuff you know, um, the person who wasn't so down and so beaten by life. And there might be people who will comment on this and say, well, yeah, but that, that's middle age. And like, you know, there's the old saying, it's, um, you know, it was in Beautiful Boy by John Lennon. Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. And you're right. But somewhere in life, you know, that happened to you when you were making your plans, you've got to let some of those plans shine through. You've got to do at least one thing you said you were going to do in your life. You know, like you have to, you have to remember a fraction of who you were when you were planning the shit in the first place, if that makes any kind of sense. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm a rambling old lady. I don't know. All I know is that I think that what we have to do, those of us who are not comfortable, is we have to look at we have to find our Mary Tyler Moore show. We have to, whatever it is that, like I found mine, I'm good. Whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat, puts you back in a mind frame of when you were 11, when you were 32, when you were six, when you were 17, whatever it was. When you had a moment in time, when you had a clear vision of how you wanted things to go, when you found excitement in writing it down and talking about it to others, um, when you had a plan in place for how to do such a thing, and um, when you felt comfortable enough to share it, you know, and like, like, I mean, I, it's the dumbest thing in the world to say, find your Mary Tyler Moore show, but do it, you know, like find that thing. Remember that time, restore yourself. If you're a computer and you have the history and you're going to restore yourself to a date when you worked, you pick that date and you restore it. And what's going to start to happen is the person you used to be is going to bleed through. Now, some people in your life who don't know you then, who didn't know you then, or who have forgotten who you were or whatever, they're going to be kind of pissed at you. Whatever. Okay. You don't live your life for other people. You live your life for yourself. And so, and then other people will follow. So what you need to do is harness that person, that 16 year old, that 12 year old, that 20 year old, whatever. Right. And live like you did then. Like, 
you know, at least in here, do whatever you used to do, say whatever you need to say, wear what you used to wear, like talk to people you haven't talked to in 20 years, whatever. And recreate a version, like a 2020 version of 19 whatever, you know, or 2000 whatever. So for younger viewers, so that you can like keep your sanity. Okay. Um, I've been hanging on by a thread for a couple of years now and something about that Mary Taylor Moore show, I like, I suddenly understood the meme, take a deep breath and remember who the fuck you are. And I'm not totally honest, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but I feel something about it. And that's awesome. To a person who hasn't felt anything but depression and rage in like a decade, feeling positive about something is really fucking good. And I think I'm gonna hang on to it. And I think I'm going to go now before I start talking in even bigger circles than I usually do. Well, all I can say is, at least with this YouTube channel, I'm doing a version of what I set out to do. I'm not a documentary filmmaker, I'm not a TV news producer, but here I am on camera getting the word out. Now, you may be confused as to what this word is <laughs> this evening, because this video has gone in a bit of a circle. So let me say it in the plainest English I possibly can, okay? Harness the old you, if current you isn't working. And then, when you found old you, newer you will come out and I guarantee you, you'll experience a positive change. Maybe in your life, maybe a grand change, or maybe just a little change in here or in here, but it will help you further your day and it will help you further your cause and it will make your relationships and your work and whatever it is that you do with yourself come a little easier because you've remembered, like the meme says, who you are. And I think I have nothing further. So I'm going to go and I'm going to continue watching the Mary's Helen Moore show while I edit this video because that's what's been keeping me sane. And I think it's um, probably the greatest therapy I've had in a long time. And I think I, I think I need to continue that. <laughs> so find your own Mary Helen Moore show and I will see you on top 10 Tuesdays. And the list is gonna be pretty kick-ass. So I'd stay tuned if I were you and I will see you then. Bye. Thank you.